Let's start by recapping the convex lens. Mind a convex is bigger in the middle, and then a concave, a bit like a cave, has a cave shape, so it's thinner in the middle. So they're the two types of lenses. Convex lens is also called a converging lens because it converges the rays of light. If they're coming in parallel like this, they all get focused at the focal point. The focal length is just this distance here, which you can measure or you might be given. For a concave lens, if the light rays came in parallel like that, they would spread out. So this one like that, so that would spread the rays out because it's called a, also called a diverging lens because that's what it does to the light. Now you need to be able to do some ray diagrams for the convex lens. So you'll normally see something like this. This line here represents the lens. We just drew, draw a line to make it simpler. You might be given the focal point or you might have to mark it on. The focal point, let's say, is here. There's always also a focal point on the other side, the same distance away. So you can measure that distance with a ruler and mark it on, um, on the other side as well. Let's say the object is here. Now the object is what you're looking at. So I'm going to label that O for object. So it might be you're looking through a lens at a, I don't know, a book or something. Now to see what happens to the light rays, what you need to do is send them parallel to this line called the principal axis, which is this one here. Now, when it goes parallel, remember from the previous example up here, when it goes parallel, the rays end up going through the focal point. So you know this one is going to go through the focal point there. And again, you'd use a ruler and you make sure you put arrows on your rays to show where they're going. The second one you always do for the lens is straight through the middle. And again, you'd use a ruler for this. But I'm going to give it a go by hand. It goes straight through the middle and it doesn't um, refract or bend. It just keeps going straight. And remember your arrow as well. So you'll be looking from here, this is your eye. And the problem is these light rays aren't gonna meet over this side. So what you have to then do, because remember the eyes used to like traveling in a straight line, is dot back with a ruler until these meet. And of course you do it way more accurately with a ruler in the exam. So here's the point they meet. Now the light started at the top of the object, at the top of the arrow, so that's gonna be the top of the image that we see. And then we extend it down to the principal axis line like this and make sure we label it eye or image, that's the image there. So the image is what you'd see. So you can see originally it looked like this, the object was the, maybe some writing on a book, and what we see is something that's magnified, right, it's bigger, it's upright, because the arrow is pointing upwards, and we say this one's virtual um, because the light rays don't actually come from that point, they appear to come from the top of the image. Um, if you ever have to dot back, it's gonna be a virtual image. The other type you could get uh, in the exam, would look something like this. Again, same lens, but this time the object might be beyond the focal point. So let's say we put the object over here. So now it's gone past the focal point. It's not quite past two times the focal length, but just after the focal point. Do exactly the same thing. One light ray goes straight, and then through the focal point there. And the other one, and again, you'd be using a ruler, goes straight through the middle like that. And then you can see that you get a very different image there. This time it's inverted. It's diminished this time, although if you did it accurately, it might not be, it might be enlarged. And this time it is real. Because look, the light rays actually go through here. Your eye is here. And you see the light rays as if they came from this point here. So it's a real image. You could project that onto a screen. Remember, that's what we did in class when we um, looked outside the classroom, put a piece of paper. You could see the memorial building or whatever it was upside down, diminished um, on a piece of paper. Now, how does this all relate to your eye, the AI you're using to look at this amazing video? Um, if you're looking at a distant object, this is what happens. The light rays come in parallel because it's so far away. And your lens in your eye, which is a convex lens, focuses the light on the back. Now, we want this focus. We want the light rays to meet here because that's where your receptors are, which sends the message to your brain. If they don't meet there, the image will be blurry. If the object comes closer, you see the light rays are no longer parallel, so they come out like this. And therefore we need a thicker or stronger lens to focus the light. So the muscles in your eyes adjust the size of that lens so that the light rays are now bent more and focused still at the same point. So that's how the eye would work normally. And that's why when you look far, um, you know, it's almost, it's almost, you can get tired if you're reading for too long because the muscles are keeping this lens quite large, which is more tiring. Um, and that's how you see distance in near, near objects.
Now, what happens when it doesn't quite work? Well, let's say you are short-sighted. Now, short-sighted, which is what I am, means I can see short. So short-sighted means short is what is good. You can see short is okay. But long distance, i.e. me looking at the back of the classroom, not so good. So that's what short-sighted means. It tells you what you can see. Now, in that case, what happens is the lens is effectively too thick because the muscles are too strong. Um, although that's more biology, but just the idea that the lens does too much bending so the light rays meet before the back of the eye. So the way we create that, and the glasses that I wear in class, are concave, because then they spread the light out, and you need to know this ray diagram. They spread the light out, then my overly strong lens brings it together, but at the right point this time. So we need to do some spreading before. So short-sighted, you fix with a concave lens. So guess what long-sighted is? Well, long sighted tells you again that you can see long, you can see in the distance, but you can't see short. It tends to affect older people more as the lens muscles weaken. And what happens is the lens isn't strong enough now to read a book. So you often see how people have their glasses on their head, they get the menu at the restaurant, they need to put the glasses on to read it. That's long sighted. So in this case, the lens is too thin or the muscles are too weak to get it thick enough. So the rays don't focus. They actually focus, would focus somewhere behind the back of the eye. So the image is blurry. So to fix that, we need to do some more focusing before. So what we do is we use a convex lens. Remember that brings the light rays or converges them together. The light rays come in, starts the converging, and then the thinner lens brings them together at the right point. So remember that long-sighted, we use a convex lens. In the exam, you'd be expected to potentially draw or sketch these ray diagrams showing what the lens does. And you definitely need to know how you fix um, each long-sighted and short-sighted with which lens, so convex or concave. It's better if you understand how the eye works, then it's easier to answer those questions. Thanks for watching.